Action. <sighs> Welcome back. For those of you joining us for the first time, let me fill you in on how this works. I'm measuring tape, girl. I measure myself before you can as a self-defense mechanism. I judge, prejudge, and roll my eyes at myself before you can even open your mouth. Measuring Tape Girl is a woman who's pushing 30 and who is still insecure, and she can't really figure out why, and she's trying to overcome her insecurities through an online video blog. And of course, this is not helping because it's not a real connection with, with people, um, which she is really lacking in her real life. Did she actually say what she meant to say, or was she just saying what she thought I wanted to hear? But she said it in such a way which makes me question if she meant it at all. You know? That we don't want the deal like the way through 60. Sure. Self-doubt is my kryptonite. Honesty is my kryptonite. When mm -hmm. she says that line, she's going to stop there because we don't want her to go all the way to the end and burn herself sure, out. Yeah. But, Jessica, unfortunately, we are going to have to get the ending at least once in each of these three shots. It makes, maybe we transition to it a couple times. So, do you have enough uh, to shoot that? Measuring tape, girl. Scene one, slate 11, take five, pages three to five. There's a lot of um, commonalities between Measuring Tape Girl and myself, um, and I think that a lot of people can relate to them as well. Um, I myself, I know I've mm -hmm. devised some self-defense mechanisms psychologically to get me through some days or some issues in my past, and you realize really that they just um, keep you at a base level and they don't help you excel because you're, you're, you're questioning your own self and your skills by not setting goals, by, you know, defending against society and work and people. Welcome back. For those of you joining us for the first time, let me fill you in on how this works. I'm measuring tape girl. You're mm. sitting in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. And you see how this is, seems to be in the wrong place? Mm -hmm. Because the whole point of this is that we're shooting the mirror. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So we are the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be that apparent. But if anyone who questions have we crossed the axis, is no, we're the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing about them. You know, it's, they're, looking at, they're looking at themselves. Rolling! Action. It's the issues that we don't talk about. Um, everyone has these self-esteem issues, they have these problems, and the whole thing about the story is that this one character can talk to a webcam, can talk to the mirror, but can't talk to other people. So the more technology we use, the further apart we seem to be getting. The hard part is to have men pay attention to it, because in reality, this comes from me, and from my life, and my acceptance of this, and you know, everyone has those moments in high school where they you know, they're not good enough, they don't look good enough, they're fat, they're thin, whatever it is. And so everyone judges and prejudges themselves. Before anyone can make fun of you, you're in some ways cutting yourself down. And I think a lot of people develop this self-defense mechanism of, I'm not good enough for this, I'm not good enough, preparing to fail. And um, that's sort of where this comes from. I think her whole wanting to be happy is something that everyone will relate to. And that sounds so simple, but um, it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of people have these down moments when they're discovering themselves and it's a lot of mid-twenties, late-twenties, sort of uh, the time period of your life in, the, in those years that you really try to figure out what you like, what you want, what makes you happy. And I think if we're all honest, we can admit to ourselves that we have very down moments and, and that we have to accept that, that Sometimes we are happy. We actually are happy. We just have these um, depressive moments, and that's okay. I've been forcing myself to slowly make different kind of visual puzzles for myself. Um, so about two, what, three, years ago, three years ago, I made a film where I had to use sound as a character. Um, so in the politics of fear, sound had to be a major character in the film. Sound design was the push of the story. And then with uh, the next film, A Day in the Life, it was about transitional elements, where how do you get from one scene to the other? And then with this film, it's all about dialogue and character development and acting. So if you put those together, transitions, sound design, character development, acting, you have the pillars of filmmaking. So I've sort of been creating these visual puzzles for myself, to sort of in some ways making things harder for myself. 
And what we've learned is that there's nothing harder than a monologue. You might even think we're fighting all the time. I, I read that thing over and over and over again. As you know, it's a long monologue, which I love because I haven't done a monologue on film in forever. So um, through preparation, I basically sectioned off my script and I said, okay, what situations in my life or in friends' lives or parents' lives or family members that, that were close to these situations and really felt them out. And believe it or not, most of them were bang on and have been experienced and I've empathized with them and it really, really helped me just connect and sort of become who she was. Action. There's nowhere to hide. So I think that's the difference between this film and other films that I've made is there is nowhere to hide. All you have is the dialogue and the actor, so all we have is a close-up. If you can make people care about a character and all she's doing is talking to you, um, that's the true test of, one, the actor and the writing and the ability to actually you know, deliver on what's written. I'm measuring tape, girl. I measure myself before you can as a self-defense mechanism. I judge, prejudge, and roll my eyes at myself before you can even open your mouth. Cut.